What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's Mind Pump time. Here's the giveaway. MAPS Aesthetic. Free access to MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilding-inspired workout program. Here's how you can win free access. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all of those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Aesthetic. Also, one more thing before we get to this incredibly awesome, slightly controversial podcast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we are running a promotion this month for everybody else. We have three bundles that we've put together. Each bundle includes nine months of exercise programming and planning, planning and video demos and whole deal. Here's the three bundles. We have one for beginners, one for intermediate people, and one for advanced people. So a bundle for everybody. They're all discounted tremendously. You can find all those bundles at mapsjanuary.com. Also, if you just want to do one MAPS program, if you just want to try it out, see what all the fuss is about, do MAPS Anabolic. It's the foundational MAPS program. That program is 50% off right now as well. So go to mapsred.com and then use the code January50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Contrary to popular belief, still the best thing you could do for immunity is to be fit Healthy and lean. Oh, that what? was hey, that was controversial just about twelve months ago. Can you believe that? Now it's now it's <laughs> trending news. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, Look on at, both sides of the fence. There, it, like, I don't I don't care. It's still to this day, there's no supplement, no no nutrient, no medicine, no nothing that will protect you from disease like simply being healthy, fit, and relatively lean. Not shredded, but relatively lean. And it's crazy that that conversation was uh, almost censored or ignored I for feel so like long. you're fat shaming right now. Uh, it's not. It's That's just not. facts. Yeah. Stop with all that. I yeah. know. Yeah. Listen, yeah, you, you... This is more of that like misinformation campaign you, stuff. I know. Listen, I, I want to be clear. Like, uh, it's That doesn't mean that you should treat people crappy if they're having challenges with that stuff. Obviously, it's a very challenging thing to do for lots of people. Uh, so you still show empathy, but it's a fact. You know, Did you see that the, the, the latest... They said that the right now... And this is kind of side topic, but right now, seventy-five percent of people who are who are dying from the latest variant, seventy-five percent have you ready for this? At least four comorbidities, not mm. one, not two, not three, but four comorbidities. I didn't think oh, we had really? anybody. I thought only like one person allegedly died from Omicron. Mm. I, that was uh, early on when they That's said a, that. And I just heard that just like a few days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that still true? Were no, they actually I don't think reporting so. that where they let you know there's those four comorbidities? That was a CDC director. That's new. Just came yeah, out and said that. Great. What makes me upset about this is forget all the, you know, the, the you know, the, the politiza politicization around it and all that stuff. It's always been true. And I, I hate that 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 was never communicated to yeah. people. Now, I will say Well, and I feel like you could have done both too, right? Yes. I I totally. feel like you could have you you could have done both. Like I mean, even the way like I suggested to my parents, like I, you know, because they I know how unhealthy they are, I was like you guys should probably go get the vaccine, but you should also try and get some vitamin D. I think you guys should be exercising right now, trying eat a cleaner diet. Like I don't understand why it had to be either or. Yeah. I don't understand why they, they couldn't have also recommended that this is something that everybody should try and do. Because let's be honest, if you're uh, morbidly obese, you're not going to get healthy or fit in six months, you know, no. after. The, but you can make it, Dan. Well, well, you can head in the right direction. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You can start to head in the right direction. And so I think that it, it just surprises me that we we had to do this kind of either or it had I to know. be like you were you were part of the uh, anti vaxxers who were just going to try and exercise and be healthy or you had to be pro vaccine and then stay indoors and fuck working out and fuck the sunlight like yeah, it's, why can't there be why couldn't there have been middle ground well okay we have to consider this that anytime there's something major it gets politicized because it's like a gift it's a, mm -hmm. it's like a gift from the, the the political gods when something crazy happens and you're a politician because it's very easy to use it to make yourself look like a savior or whatever. And it's right. not a popular message to say this. Hey, everybody, here's something you can do. That's not a popular message as a politician. What the popular message is always, it's hey, everybody, everybody else's fault. Yeah, this is what we'll do. We'll do this for you. We'll solve it for you. And so you, you, if you tell people there's some responsibility on your end, you're probably not going to sway them or cause this division, which is very uh, you know, uh, beneficial to political parties. So it's just not a popular political message. Nobody wants so to hear do you, that. So do you think that if this, if if COVID would have hit us in a, a non-election year, do you think that the way the CDC and everybody else would have handled this would have been different? I think it would have been similar, but it would have been, uh, I think, okay, so here's the deal. Hmm. 
every two years there's some kind of an election, whether it's con congressional or presidential. Right. So no and matter what's going to be landing on it's that. always It's always an issue that can get a bill passed or spending or just to make your opponents look bad or make you look good, right? So whoever's in power, obviously it's their fault. Everybody's dying. Uh oh, now I'm in power. Actually, it was the guy before me. It was his <laughs> fault. Here's my solutions. Yeah. So, and, and here's the truth. It, it doesn't make you invulnerable. Obviously, there's all, you could be fit and healthy and still have all kinds of problems, but the numbers show that at least two thirds of cancers can be prevented through a fit and healthy lifestyle. Heart disease, the vast majority of heart disease is prevented with a fit and healthy lifestyle. Chronic autoimmune issues, great data that shows that either you won't get any, or if you do, the severity of them gets greatly reduced. Like pretty much any illness or disease or chronic health issue is positively impacted by being fit and healthy. It sometimes doesn't prevent everything, obviously, but if you're going to go into a situation yeah, that's the only challenging, thing you can do. Yes, and I think that's that's the most frustrating part, being in the fitness and the health community. And I think that's why you know there was a lot of reserve with a lot of the information out there, is because that was just glossed right over and wasn't brought to the forefront. It's like, well, what you can do is really make better efforts, better dis conscious decisions about what you're putting in your body, and you know how you're actually like moving around and exercising in order to maintain this healthy body to stave off or just make yourself of, more resilient that's the thing anything. you're just you're more resilient when you're strong and you're healthy well yeah. i want to officially welcome you to the club now <laughs> oh you're yeah. on you're on yeah, team, you're on team covid now so we've all we've all officially gone through it. I am a little disappointed how easy it was for you. I thought you being the fattest one, you would definitely suffer, <laughs> suffer the most. <laughs> so yeah. I really, I yeah, really, thought, really thought it was gonna be down. I was a count. little upset. I was a little upset that I think it was harder for me. Hey, you know, than, hey, than you, you know what's funny? There's like a clear divide for yeah. a lot of things in our in in. Thanks for outing me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know. He's a, listen. Yeah. There's a clear divide. Like you and I, Adam, are so similar in certain ways, and Justin and Doug are very similar in certain ways. And one of the ways that they're similar is they both seem to have mutant immune I know, systems. I know, You and I will always get the most The sick. fact that Justin didn't get it the first time, like it, it's hard to describe this room for someone. It's like, we have zero ventilation in here. We are all talking, yelling. It's like we're in a small hot tub and somebody pees. You're going to yeah. get pee on yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah and those tub. were like the more nasty versions, right? And I got the little like lame, like weak, you know, ooh, I was kind of feeling something, but it was gone. Yeah, yeah I know. Version. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you're. You, it was. It was totally nothing for yeah. you, which is great. Yeah. No. I again. Yeah. I'm glad. Now both your but, both your boys or one boy has it right now. Uh, Who's, no. Both both got it. Both and, have it. Um, How was it for them? Same with same like it was with me. They were just like sort of achy, and then um, and then it just kind of came and went. And now they're doing you know backflips and cartwheels. And that's so awesome. It's just like dude. And okay. Courtney didn't get it at all. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Wild. Yeah, so weird. Bizarre. And, and for me, it was funny because like uh, for the longest time, I'm like, what is it? You know, uh, is it because I'm like, maybe it's because I'm like more dirty than the guys. You know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I like, like dirt under my nails and, you know, I'm just like always exposed Outside to eating like, dirt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> more bacteria. Like, I'm just like a more of a bacteria guy. <laughs> I don't know. He's always he's yeah. rolling around in the tree. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> just like pig pen, you know, from like uh, <laughs> just like rolling. Adam dirt. Adam showers like three times a day. Yeah, you know? I don't care, dude. <laughs> I'm out there, you know. Right. In the, in the mix. You got a point. You got a point here. Right yeah, now. Yeah. Really, yeah. Now I will say this: the the uh, the narrative has totally changed. It's, it's totally already, changed. It's already shifting the direction you said. Yes, uh, and they're starting it. to say um, there's two statements that they that the CDC made, which blew me away. Because had you said anything like this a year ago, you would have been wiped off social media. Yeah, you know the irony of this is like so I have you know, like a split group of friends, right? My conservative, liberal, then the kind of in between, right? I, I would consider myself more in between. And my uh, my my liberal threads are quiet right now because they were they were Crickets. two years ago the CDC post that's what I get every every like in our threads yeah whatever the CDC would say would come out like see see this is yeah. what they be saying all the time like that nothing now because oh. <laughs> their whole tune is changing it's back changed. the opposite direction yeah. well okay so so uh, two things they said one is that what I just said about the four co comorbidities that's a seventy five percent so a majority. <laughs> The second thing they said was at least 40%, and I'm going to pull it up just because I don't want to misrepresent this. So again, this okay. was from the CDC. Uh, so CDC director Walensky reports, in some hospitals that we've talked to, up to 40% of the patients who are coming in with COVID are not coming in because they're sick with COVID, but because they're coming in with something else. 
and have had the the Om Omicron variant detected or COVID detected. Mm -hmm. So in other words, almost half in some hospitals of the people who, and so these numbers getting reported, but those people aren't going in for COVID. They're going in for something else. And the policy is to test everybody shows up positive. And so that's- These policies now are so completely different than they were like yeah. a few months ago. Like, so <clears throat> like, it, it, do you have that uh, statement that they made about like, if if your healthcare provider or worker uh, now, because they're so short staffed, if you test positive, like they'll let you come into work. Yeah. So as long as you're symptom free, that's what they said. You can come in testing positive. Yeah. What's, do you understand how crazy that CDC is? CDC is now at five days. They're saying now, is that what the, the, five the protocol days, is? Yeah. Five days. Uh, you can go back even if you test positive, as long as you show no symptoms. It's just, is what they're saying. so I mean, when does five from, days going start? from firing everybody that won't take a vaccine to now letting yeah. you come in positive? I think it's five days after five days of no symptoms, but if you still test positive, then you, you can go in. And I think that's just, there's new data, but also there's a shortage. Yeah. Well, it's also because they're, I mean, this, I mean, they're now we're, we're, we're also, okay. And another thing that is changing right now, we're now seem to be concerned of how this is affecting the economy and all the other unintended consequences that, like, that, like oh, suicides okay. and stuff like that. Right. Like yeah. that seems to be what we're trying to take you know into what? consideration. This is a, now. This was a, this is a lesson in uh, mass fear and I, there's a justification for the fear because there was a real thing that was happening. But the reactions, the overreactions that tend to happen, it reminds me of September 11th and some of the policies that we passed, it still are with us. Isn't right? it kind of always that way, though? Don't, yes. Isn't it always? But, it, but we, that's why you have to resist the, on, on some level, right? There has to be some pushback because otherwise it's just like, it, again, like the opportunist kind of a thing with politicians Plus, is to it, Look, it's, human, sweep in it's also other. human nature. When, right. when you're afraid- you overreact. You don't make smart decisions. I'm. Yeah. I, I remember. Look, uh, I'm not immune to this. By the way, L no pun intended. I remember years ago, my home got burglarized, and we weren't home. We came home. The house was ransacked. They went through everybody's stuff. My my son's some of his stuff was even stolen. He was just a little guy. He was only like six years old, and I completely overreacted. I overreacted with weapons and, <laughs> and traps. Security system. You bought, like, you like, like Home like Alone. Oh, sword, dude. Right? Fucking, like oh. iron swings down from Bro, the door. I would sleep downstairs waiting <laughs> for someone jacks. to come. I mean, it just, and it's Watched just. Home Alone a million yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, oh, he's on to something here. Yeah. yeah. I, put, I put Vaseline on the floor. Yeah. He'll yeah. slide and slip right here. Yeah. That bad guy. But you know, it's just, it's a, it's a lesson in human nature. We just have to be, you know, kind of careful. But I will say this. Remember what I said in a past Pod, uh, past, past, excuse me, episode about how I think the gym industry is going to see a surge um, oh, yeah. in people. I think that's coming because now the messages work out. Everybody needs to lose weight and get in shape. And gyms have been closed. People haven't gone because they've been afraid. I think everybody <clears throat> wants to start working out. Um, I've had people DM me who work in gyms who are saying, oh, we're seeing huge amounts of people coming in. I saw this on, I don't know if it was a local news channel, but they were interviewing one of the um, gym owners and, and they're like, do you find this surprising with uh, the surge of Omicron where they had a surge of membership enrollments yeah. uh, sim you know, simultaneous with that? So, But yeah, I think it's just people are kind of like, well... You know everything that's out there says we need to you know make sure we're fit and healthy you know to to really do well with this. Well, so. you guys know where I stand. I mean, I was looking at Planet Fitness already as a buy right now because I think that uh, I think you're right. What you predicted, the message you, you can see it happening. Yep, um, it's only going to get more in that direction, right? And I think it's going to attract a whole new wave of people that. Same, the same people that were scared to death to go anywhere and were now double masking straight. in their house yeah. are going to be scared to, I need to get in shape. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that the, the type of gym they're going to flock to is like a Planet Fitness, right? That's, low not, a bad, that's not a bad guess. Low that's entry level. Call, I don't think that uh, it's a, a long-term hold. I think it's a, a smart buy right now. I don't. It's not on a 52-week high. It's, it's towards the top, but not mm -hmm. at the highest. I think that... First quarter numbers are going to come in, and especially if the messaging stays around what you're mm -hmm. saying, I think that it's going to surge. And so, yeah, no, I think it's a, a smart. Play I also right think now. part of the surge is the feeling that they're now we're getting permission to start going to gyms again, mm. and it's been two years of people feeling stressed and anxious and <clears throat> kind of staying away from things and. Fitness or exercise, I should say. We always look, everybody talks about, I just opened with how great it is for your physical health and all that stuff. 
But what's understated, and I still think this is the biggest value of exercise, is the mental health effects. Mm -hmm. And I think people are feeling now the need to move, to right. get out and do something. And it's it's essential for mental health, absolutely mm -hmm. essential. And I think it's that's one of the reasons why I predict we'll start to see a surge. I can't wait to see what yeah, Planet totally Fitness's agree. first quarter uh, report comes. Yeah, out. I think that's a good. I think that's a smart play there. Now I'm really curious about the you know mirrors, tonals, mm. beach body. I saw an article about those uh, are the stay at home. Uh, yeah, stop. they're 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 dipping right. Pelotons, everything's kind of kind of dipping right now. So I'm wondering if that was just like a, a crazy trend that happened, and a lot of their projections and everything that mm. they were touting all of last year is it going to come back down? Remember, to we Earth? had the tonal yeah. CEO on. This is what we were saying. Yep. What, well, what we're saying also, so. we had Mark Mastroff on, and he was talking about you know them working through it in the Asian markets, and then. You know, once that kind of like turned around, how everybody jumped right back yes. to yeah. uh, gyms. So I, I was like, I don't know. Yep. You know, we have different, but who knows? Yeah. Maybe Did you same. see uh, Lulu is uh, suing, or excuse me, Nike is suing uh, Lulu right now? For Why? Why? Their, well, they bought Mir. Remember, like, a That's year right. or two ago, yeah, they bought Mir. and supposedly Mir infringes on like six different patents that Nike had for like tech stuff, like tracking your running and distance oh, and all that because it tracks all these things. Crazy. So supposedly they're infringing on like six patents and Nike's coming after Lulu right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. But they don't. Okay. Yeah. No, I, it's funny because again, going down the whole like inventor, you know, patent uh, uh, route, like you see how many patents Nike literally just like polluted like anything when it comes to fitness and tracking, they like filed like a million they did. patents for. Yeah. So that's their we defense is their defense is they're like and their counterings, counter suing back is like too broad. Yeah. Which is ironic because they just got sued by um who sued the or Peloton um sued no, excuse me, Lululemon sued Peloton for their like tights that they made. They made some like, you know, like athleisure wear type stuff. Mm -hmm. And Lulu has the same thing, a bunch of just patents that kind of cover things really broad. And that's how Peloton yeah. won the case against them was saying that these are too broad. The R's, the, you can tell these Peloton tights are not the same as Lulu tights. And Lulu is using the same exact defense against Nike in their suit. Yeah, you know what sucks <laughs> about, about the system? Because I understand why we have it and it makes sense. But also when you get to that size, Part of the game is to make it so expensive to fight your so, lawsuit that you don't want it. Before you walked in, Justin and I yep. were talking about this, and like I think this is an example of like you know billionaires fucking with each other, yeah. just big yeah. money messing with yeah. each other. It'll cost us money, but it's going to cost it's like, you all right, money you too. Fuck with me and sue me. All right, we'll take this. We're going to sue you over that. You I, know? I Regardless if it goes anywhere, dude. You know? Did I ever tell you? I, just throwing punches at each other. I had a client that owned uh, lots of commercial buildings. And he, I remember he comes in once and he's super pissed off. And I'm like, what's going on? He goes, there's a lawyer that is going around to all of my buildings. He's finding out which ones I own. He's going in there with a tape measure and a ruler and like protractors and making sure everything is perfectly ADA compliant. If it's off by a half an inch or an inch, he's oh. telling me you, uh, you need to pay me and fix this or I'm taking you to court. Yeah. So this guy literally would go in and, and, they, and I'm sure the most just pay him off, right? They just pay him off. Because it cost easier. him like $40,000. That lawyer in that uh, documentary for uh the, was the fight before Christmas. I was trying to like get you to watch. It he is is on that level. He makes all yeah. his money by suing everybody and also too just just like imposing his will on on the whole community. Scumbag. You know, just to and it's again, it's like you look at that, it's like such an abuse of, of power because he can pay he basically it's his job, right? So mm -hmm. he doesn't have to pay a lawyer to do all this work. So it's like it doesn't cost him much, but it costs everybody else a lot of money to get legal representation. And so a lot of people they don't want to go through that and yeah. so they'll just pay him off. Speaking of of scumbags or scams, I should say that's probably a better way to transition is who was the name? Do you guys remember the name of that girl who they were they were touting as the next Steve, the female Steve, oh. Steve Jobs, and she did the blood one drop right. of blood? You're talking about that pharma company? Yes, that was yep. a huge scam. So that just came. So Elizabeth her, something. Yes. Her her uh, her court case just came up. So she got. I oh. forgot. I, I think she, she got, got like, a nice sentence, dude. She did. I think she got like 15 years. Yeah, she did. 
Yeah, she got like, like, that. like 15 years for that. Dude, yeah, what a... Some serious fuck. What was the name of that? I totally forgot the name of it. I, I overheard that the case... Yeah, Theranos? There, there you go. go. There you go. Thank Elizabeth you. Elizabeth Holmes. Thank yes. you. There's yes. a great documentary what, on that. What did she That's get? a fire festival situation. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's hype. Nobody's checking anything. Yeah. So here, Powerful it, female CEO. Yes. Let's all pay you know, this money. Because she was young and female, she fit the narrative. So the media went on it, which gave her more attention. Then she got like one or two bigger investors and what happens with investors often is if I'm looking to invest in a company and I see that there's a bigger investor that already invested I assume they did their due dil diligence so right. I just go and oh this is going to be good yeah nobody did their due diligence there was a lot of red flags obviously this is all hindsight right yep. huge huge scam huge scam did you see what she got Doug was it 15 years I thought I no heard. faces up to 20 years I don't know if this is an okay. old article or not as well as a fine of Two hundred fifty thousand dollars plus restitution for each account. What well, the restitution is going to be huge, dude. Yeah, so I don't know if this is a, an old article or what. Here, let me see if I can. I mean, find would she more. be held liable personally for restitution? Is it? Is that like? I, I don't mean, know. Yeah, I wonder. That's a good question, and like she'd be able to pay it. I mean, there were millions and millions and millions of dollars that people lost through investing in her fake her fake company. I mean, yeah. the, the this the message was with one drop of blood. You could test like a hundred different things, yeah. yeah. Which would, which is truly groundbreaking and revolutionary. Oh yeah, that would have been awesome. It would, it would have been great. Well, technology. I was I was listening to the the all in guys and the, the their science guy that's on there says it's not that's possible right now, but uh, where what's what's hard is to do that with multiple things and then to make it really accurate with that small of a sample size. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Because when you do that small of a sample size, you're basically you know guesstimating you know oh if the this smaller was, the sample the, the less accurate you are with right yeah. yeah right so i mean the the science is kind of there to do it i think that's why so many people bid on it some things like blood sugar and a couple other things you could do it with just obviously you still you can do that now with blood sugar yeah yeah but nonetheless it, it would have been groundbreaking yeah, but her numbers technology. didn't support any of what she was proposing no what so. she oh yeah they were just it just it was so unbelievable and she made it in, in you know like withheld from all the investors and she made stuff up yeah, completely she's made it up that's completely. how i feel about i mean this market right now there's so much stuff that just doesn't make oh sense to me I, a lot I, being made up. every yeah. day i read like something new about something i'm like or new nft and that someone said i was looking at my cousin sent me over the the i think i shared this with you guys a couple a couple weeks ago the the nike signs that will kind of like how the car that changes what so they so they they released the the new apple glass or like so it, it was uh you know one of those where it wasn't supposed to be really leaked so Somebody leaked what the prototype of the new Apple glasses look like, uh -huh. and so part of them you'll be able to wear, and then you'll people that have like and Nike will have like these, you know, uh, AR Nikes that will ch they'll change colors and the swoosh will be different based off of what you see through the the AR goggles and stuff. So that's coming down the pipe. Wow. Right now. But anyway, my point of bringing that up was that's actually weird. just to talk about NFTs and just how many people are buying into these these NFTs that just, I mean. It, at what point do you ask yourself, like, okay, it's too, it's, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably, probably, you know what is. it is? Well, I don't understand is like, okay, so, and I love designers and I'm, a, you know, I'm a fan of like a lot of artwork that's out there and everything. But if you're not known and you're putting your own NFTs out there, it's like, and people are buying, like, what are you buying? Like, what, yeah. like, what, what is that like? Th there's no demand for people to like. Here's here's what keep I, perpetuating this, you know, further. No, you know what's happening is I don't think most people think that this is going to be a great long play. I think a lot of people see this as exploding, and there's the fear, there's a the FOMO. Yeah, I want to jump on right, right. and make my quick dollar. Yeah, and I can understand that. It's obviously an inflated, crazy market. There's real value to the technology behind NFT. It's definitely not what you see now. Do you think it's going to be like an overnight, like pull, you know, rip the bandaid off or pull the rug out from underneath you type I th of... I think it's going to be a pretty fast... It'll be... It'll have to be, right? Because yeah. I, I don't know how it'll be a slow transition. So you're going to have all these people that, are, like you're saying, that are... They own the, the eight that they paid 12 grand for. Yeah, now it's fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of those, like, okay, you've got enough people that are celebrities that own those that are all getting into these exclusive, like, virtual clubs that they're going to. That gives it value well, it when, does. Some, when a celebrity it owns does. it. It does. If if there, there's only a thousand of those board apes that exist right and if of the thousand you know 80 percent of them are owned by c celebrities and athletes um and they all get to congregate into private clubs that only they get access to by having those apes That's i could see yeah. those i could see those holding 
their value because really rich people that just want to rub elbows with some famous people are going to be willing to pay someone that. But to your point, Justin, you know, the random artist who like is, has sold three paintings in his life and he's selling now a bunch of NFTs or some shit or people with their, their startup businesses. And then they're all of a sudden trying to make this huge pivot over into, you know, into the metaverse and stuff. Yeah. I just think it's too early to decide whether or not, uh, your idea is going to be the next big thing. I mean, I really feel like that's what you're you're gambling on. So, okay, and I know you showed me like a video of this a while back uh, in terms of like it actually being this tangible virtual world like that they're constructing. Is this still like something that everybody's looking at every day is like this actual virtual world where I got a, this plot of land and I can show you this yes. right now. So I think, uh, you know, I think, Player One does a really good job, in my opinion, of yeah. illustrating what it may look like. And if you remember in Player One where he gets on and he's like, his buddy, he's like, oh, where's my buddy at? And he's like on a different world. Yeah. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he's in a whole yeah. different world fighting like crazy stuff. And then he's over in this world. Like it's going to be that big. It's infinite on how big it could be. So you buying real estate on some virtual world, like some planet, you're, yeah. you're, you're banking on that. That's where everybody's going to want to yeah. be. Like what happens when... Uh, eight months from now or two years from now when the thing really starts kicking off and people are in there, someone builds a place that everybody wants to be at and your place is, yeah. is old no, news or they never want now. to go there. No, you're right. If if, if Super Mario Brothers was a, a a virtual world that everybody went to, like owning you know level two or the castle in level five or whatever would have a certain amount of value. Yeah. But if nobody's going, it's just there. It's yeah. Worth, it's, it, that's okay. It's There's a lot of hype. A lot of, it's all mostly speculation right now. But the technology for real is going to stick around and we're going to see some pretty good it's going it's going to it's going to nfts are going to and crypto both are going to disrupt disrupt some major industries yeah. 100% hands down i believe that but to think that you have a crystal ball and know exactly how it's going to disrupt yeah. and the NFT that you think Bro, you're it's buying It's like the is dot-com boost bust. It's like when the dot-com era really started exploding, every dot-com company that hit the public market exploded. Now, had you timed it right, yeah, you could have made a lot of money. But you talk to any wise investor and they'll tell you trying to time the market that way is like you're, you're playing in Vegas, right? Yeah. The problem is you hear the stories of the people that hit the lucky number. So I hear the story of the twelve year old that made five million dollars, right. and I th I'm going to jump on and do right. this myself. You know, well, yeah, it reminds me of that where somebody bought, um, yeah, some kind of um, uh, like a big company. I don't know if it was like a Disney related type URL, yeah, and then they had to pay them for that URL. And yep. then now that became like a viable business strategy was to buy these URLs before the big company you know, had to come back and acquire it. Yeah. yeah. Like everybody's yeah. trying to do that. Doug's that guy. Doug owns like 500 URLs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> so do I. Do you yeah, own a bunch of To too? match like his thousands of passwords. You, you want to hear my, my, my strategy? What? When it looked like cannabis, when I started to see like, oh my God, marijuana is going to start to become legalized little by little. Mm -hmm. I bought a ton of marijuana related URLs. Did you that, really? I did. And I, I mean, I can see why I did it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, like, like 420 this spliff.com. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, these businesses are going to explode. You know, now, now it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Weed, I think, I think I owned one that was weed to your door or something like that, oh, no. which sounds kind of cool. It does. But a delivery service, I don't give a shit. They're going to be like, hey, can I buy your URL for, you know, a hundred bucks? No. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's do another one. Yeah. They'll just make up their own dumb like, name. Damn it. Oh, that sucks. Uh, what do you guys, what do you guys think is going on? Are you watching the housing market right now? You see that they're predicting again, another year of like, 17% plus type oh, of increase. What? Dude, well, you know what? Pump, pump, pump it up. What you said is is interesting, mm -hmm. but the, the introduction or rise of 40-year mortgages. I 100%. That is gonna, that's going to be air into the balloon, <sighs> you know? More and more. A 40-year mortgage? 40. Doesn't it just make sense, though, that that's the way? Like, nobody buys a house with the thought of paying it off. When was the last time you heard somebody do that? Unless you listen to Dave Ramsey and that's your kind of your your, your Nobody does anymore. Nobody does. Yeah. Most people, it's like a, a long-term investment, yeah. setting up your retirement later on in life. And so it, the way to get, and, and then also we're, yeah, you know, equity out all these people use. are coming out, well, like longevity experts and, and saying that we're going to be living longer, the next generation coming up. And so to me, it makes, it's the natural progression in, in It's just loans. cheaper monthly payment. And and then in addition to that, where I also think that we're continuing to move in the, the kind of millennial direction of like kind of not owning anything, right? I think that the future is, and we talked about this years yeah. ago, 
that the future is going to look like this where you're not you don't you're own, rent everything yeah you rent a car you don't you don't you're no one's going to own a car in the future yeah i think when they, when i think cars houses a lot of that stuff i mean obviously the yeah, people just for nostalgia right I, but mm -hmm. it, it, the way the natural progression to that is it'll just push it out of out of reach well you know how people. you know is if you look at some of the big uh house housing buyers right now there are organizations that buy them like lots of them and rent them so you're getting a lot of these buyers that own multiple units, and, and so yeah. that's how you know. Yeah, there's still not a there's still not a big portion, but of it's the, growing. Yeah, but it's yeah. it is growing. It is growing. It is heading in that direction, and I and they're buying single family homes more now than they ever were yes. in the past, mm -hmm. which it used to be kind of like this, you know, multi family units, yeah, apartment or, complexes, or, yeah, like that. But you're now seeing them buy single family homes. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's setting the table for that. Uh, but the that the thought that this this market is going to continue to go this year is just it's crazy yeah. to me. All right, yeah. so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, hormones because I keep getting DMs about um, hormone stuff ever since I, you know, told the audience that I had started on TRT, and I've had people ask me questions like, you know, my testosterone's not that low, but it's to the point where I want to see if there's anything I can do to raise it. And so my advice is always, you know, well, if you're exercising properly, eating right, getting good sleep, getting sunlight, those are the best things you do. And then there's certain supplements that can help. They're not going to help as much as getting healthy. But they can help, and the one that has the, some of the best signs is ashwagandha. So, and I want to say this so that you know, save people the headache of trying to DM me because I'm shadow banned. You can't find me anyway. Is uh, ashwagandha? Ashwagandha consistently raises testosterone in men with low testosterone, and it does have a hormone balancing effect uh, in women as well. Is the is the ashwagandha that is found in Organifi's green juice? Is that enough? For what you need to be taking in a daily, do you know what the RDA if is? If you're going to take it long term, yes, yeah. there okay. is no RDA because it's an herb, right? Uh, it's not an essential nutrient. Um, in the short term, you'll probably does wanna... it have to be an essential nutrient to have an RDA to it? Uh huh. Really? Yeah, there's no RDA for uh, for things that are not essential. There's no RDA for you know salt palmetto or you know ashwagandha or anything like that. Oh, interesting. I you might have I and you might see things like don't take more than this amount or you know be careful if you do this. Right. But no, not for herbs. But ashwagandha consistently raises testosterone in men and balances hormones in women. I think acutely you could take a higher dose, but if you take it long term at lower doses, like what's found in the Organifi green juice, but there's other stuff in the green juice as well, it it should have this kind of hormone balancing effect. Now, where where would you naturally find it? Is there is it uh, is it is it a root? What is it? Oh no, it's it's a it's a I think it's a root. I believe ashwagandha means, if I'm not mistaken, horse. Or horse pee because it smells really bad. Have you guys ever smelled ashwagandha? Yeah. And it's if you take it in, yeah, if you take it in a dropper form, that's why I was asking you about green juice because I remember the first time I, I took it. I remember you talked about this years ago on the podcast, even before I think we were with Organifi, and told me I should take it. And I took it. I was like, oh, this is nasty. It's strong. Too. Oh, you on the liquid form? Yes. Oh, it's yeah. strong, dude. The, oh, it's, you open the bottle and you it's get hit potent with that smell. as shit. Yeah. So. If, that's why I'm asking about Organifi because if I could just have a green juice packet every week, um, that's a way. That's yeah, so a way if better. You, if you take the green juice, every, you know, daily or yeah. semi daily for long periods of time, I think that's probably a better way of using ashwagandha, unless you have, unless it's recommended to take at higher doses for acute situations, like if you're working with a. Uh, Ayurvedic specialist. Now you would never get it somewhere naturally in your diet, though. No. You wouldn't. You're right. No, no one's just no. chewing on. Roots. It's yeah. You're not going to eat an ashwagandha salad or anything like it's that. It's like a like turmeric, though. Like, do they? Turmeric is found uh, in you know curcumin, right? So that's that's a that's like a um, uh, flavoring or, or an additive to lots of different mm -hmm. foods. Mm -hmm. We got uh, this from like the Eastern, uh, you know, practitioners with the with the herbs and yeah. Yeah, Ayurvedic medicine Ayurvedic. uses a lot of ashwagandha. So I don't know, Doug. Does it really mean How, horse piss? Because I, I don't know, but it is a plant that's native to India and North Africa, mm. and it comes from the root. Now, mm -hmm. is it? A, a, you know, I don't know if it's just from hanging out with you because you would know better because you've been probably talking about it longer. But I never heard of it before. Is it? Is it relatively new? To hear, like, it, was it something that has been, been in Eastern medicines for a long time, long time, but then just made its way to get popular in? in it's West? been used for a long time in Ayurvedic medicine. Um, it's one of their staple. Uh, I don't know what you would call. Because even as a young trainer, I never recommended it or even knew anything about it because it wasn't really popular in yeah. the West. But then you started seeing studies that started to come out to show, especially when the studies <clears throat> show it raises testosterone. Well, everybody wants to take, or it makes you stronger. There are studies that show. You build more muscle, so they, they'll do like a this many, you know, 15 men on ashwagandha, 15 men off ashwagandha. Let's have them lift weights. 
oh, the group that takes ashwagandha built more muscle and more strength. That definitely increased its popularity. I think this is like the positive side of the nerdy biohackers. Yeah. You know? Like they're the ones that like <laughs> Found, deep, find this stuff. Yeah. They find yeah. all these like really random uh, herbs and, and, and different types of supplements yeah. that were used like like long time ago or like different parts of the world or like, you know, like the Himalayan yak, whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, like they'll find something that yeah. has some value because they're trying to like create a whole business around. You know, it's funny. It's not that hard. If you, it's not obscure. If you just looked at Ayurvedic medicine has been practiced for thousands of years by millions and millions and millions of people. All you got to do and so those Chinese medicine and all you got to do is look at what are their top you know, herbs or medicinals. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. these. Yeah. And what's look still used consistently exactly. amongst everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Doug, you said, did you find something? Oh, no, it's just uh, 6,000 years old, uh, uh, wow. Ayurvedic. Yeah. So, and here's the problem. Here's one of the yeah, things. Yeah, but do, we, do, you, do, you, do you, does anyone have like a story on to like what made it all of a sudden move into over here? It's when like, it showed, I don't remember how long ago, but there was like, a was study. There like that a, was there like a study that came out that I don't know was if like was, groundbreaking for it? I don't or, know if there was a single study, but it showed that it built muscle and improved athletic performance. And mm. then next thing you know. That was enough. It, that was yeah, enough. that's usually, that'll <laughs> but do it. This is the, the, the thing that is a little bit, uh, I don't know, maybe for lack of a better term, annoying is that because we have Western medicine and the scientific method, which has tons of value, sometimes we discredit anecdotes that have been around for thousands of years. Like yeah. I get anecdote. Anecdote is your friend tells you this works. Probably, maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It's not, it's not on the same uh, platform as the scientific method, obviously. But when you have 6,000 years of anecdote, yeah. I think that that's got some validity, whether you have a scientific study or not. Probably take a little bit of attention here. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, there it is right there. That's the root. Yeah. That's well, also, wasn't like uh, cordyceps was was the uh, Chinese like women's uh, swimming team yeah. that that brought that attention yep. to light. And that's been around again you yeah, forever, right? Forever. But yeah. that was only because they won a bunch, right? They were winning like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. Who knows if it was cordyceps or something else? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but whatever. At least it brought that to the surface, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking of studies, I got a funny study for you. Also, so there was a study that came out on psilocybin which cracked me up. You ready for this? Let's hear it. Sometimes it, what makes me laugh too is, is like science is kind of way behind what people already know. So this is the, this was the headline. Psilocybin is safe to use hmm. in 10 milligram and 25 milligram doses. Okay. When people eat magic <laughs> mushrooms, they eat like two grams, three grams, like 2000, 3000 yeah, about, yeah. you know, milligrams. This study shows that, you know, like one tenth of that is yeah. probably okay. I don't know. It made me laugh. I saw that study. So I belong to like uh, different groups on Facebook. So this was like a science group or whatever. Yeah. So underneath that, jokingly, I put a comment. I said, it's, much, it's, it's safe at much higher doses too. People underneath were cracking up. Because I'm like, yeah, dude. Well, no shit. We've been messing with this stuff for- I can't wait till uh, Magic Spoon starts putting magic mushrooms inside. Oh my stuff. God. Stop. Don't say that. <laughs> hey, hey, did you know? Did you know? It's so, be tasty. I, you know, there's a lot of studies that show obviously if you're in a calorie surplus you gain body fat but when you're a protein calorie surplus you tend to gain less body fat than other macronutrients if all things are equal yes. calorie wise yes well i mean okay that makes sense well it depends right it makes it definitely makes sense if you're exercise if you're strength training yeah. yes i mean because i've nutrient repartition said this right? I, yeah i've said this all i say this all the time it's like listen you're going to increase your calories and make sure you hit your protein intake What's great about that is even though you know you're in a surplus and your body's going to store some of that, you're going to some of that is going to get partitioned over into building muscle because yeah. you're well. It, so what it is is it doesn't change the laws of physics. You, if you take in more calories than you burn, you're going to gain body fat. But I think what it does when you eat more protein is it changes the calorie out side of the formula. So I think when you take more protein, either does, through the muscle building process, wait, wait, so let's back up on law of thermodynamics for a second. Yes. Does it necessarily say that you're going to gain body fat? You're just going to gain. You're, you're just going to gain. Okay, yeah. But so I'm talking about the study saying you gain less body fat. Yeah, yeah. So I think part of it's what you said. Yeah. Some of it's going to muscle. And then because of the increased muscle, now you have a higher caloric sure. expenditure. Sure. So now it's no longer as big of a surplus as, yeah. it, as it was before. Yeah. So protein is a great, if you're going to overeat, I guess, that's probably the mat. Although, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, honestly, if you want to overeat, it's probably not protein. You probably want to overeat fat and carbs and some, you know. Well, yeah, that was that, one of my favorite my things guess. about the, the, and again, I know I'm not, yeah, 
I'm not promoting you eat the whole box, but you, <laughs> <laughs> you could get high and eat the whole box accidentally. I know somebody that's done He's all, that. Don't eat the whole box, but get high. Yeah. I've heard of people. <laughs> but even if you do, I mean, you end up getting like, what do we figure out? Like 70 something grams of protein. Yep. And then I think it was like barely over a thousand something calories or even less than that. It's like, it's not that much. It's not, I've done a lot more damage yeah. with a bag of chips or yep. candy or, you know, some, some snacks for sure. Oh, so man. at least with that, I'm getting a good ratio. You totally. Know? All yeah. right. So at, speaking of damage, and I know I mentioned shadow band earlier, you are too. Yeah. Are you, are people, so here's the reports I'm getting. People are saying they can't find me on Instagram. So they'll have to type up my whole name. Can't find me. Yeah. And then when they do find me, when they try to follow me or message me, yeah. they get a notice from Instagram. That's so like Vicky, a you were telling me something this morning, right? You, you, the, the, every time you try to follow me, like unfollow, you have to put my full name in. Yeah, and then for some reason I have to keep requesting you. It takes me off of following you. Yeah, see, so she said that to me today. She said, hey, just so you know, I'm not like weirdly stalking you because I keep, it shows you keep keep following <laughs> you. Because it keeps, every time I follow you, then ends up unfollowing you. Dude, people get messages. They'll try to DM me or follow me. Yes. Do you want to send this person? To, are you sure you want to follow this person? <laughs> just, be careful. Sure? Yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of feel more cool now. Sort because of Alex Jones you know? level. Yeah. I, you know, the challenge, here's the challenge to the audience. See if you can find us, you know, good yeah. luck with that. But it's interesting. Yeah. I think I'm just a, a guilty by association here. I think I just, because <laughs> of being your fucking friend, man. It's, yeah. it's a, Cause I'm like, I didn't even snowball. It's the, falling downhill. The worst, me next. you know, thing I've done as far as guidelines, I guess at the, the weed comment, but it's like, come on, dude, there's people smoking weed on there and doing shit all the time. Like the fact that I said I was going to have some weed and wine with my wife, that's, that's what got me. That's the only thing that makes sense to me because I haven't done any, you know, COVID push the boundaries like you do. Like you get into the uh, more, you know, edgy stuff. I don't like say that. anything controversial. It's so crazy. Uh, I don't. You, you had that one cartoon that was hilarious, right? The, I did? The, the, the oh, 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 uh, the uh, social uh, justice one? Social justice where That was one. a long time ago. I know. Though. Yeah. I know. That was as bad as I think it's got. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm, I, I stay pretty, I like to think I'm, I'm pretty neutral on that stuff. I try not to get into the, especially the political stuff like you do. Like that to me is, a, think, you're just asking for it by posting yeah, that stuff. Man, I, I know, like if you do post anything about Biden, you have to put like satire in front in the caption in order for you not to get it like ripped down so i know it's interesting i know it's an I'm algorithm serious. i wonder if you could do this i wonder if you can write the word satire but then cover it with the meme so nobody sees it but the algorithm well kind of like what we were doing with the go get the vaccine sticker oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that was interesting right <laughs> yeah, yeah that was a hack yeah. I had well, someone, sure there's definitely got to be, I, I wouldn't be surprised actually if you could probably google search and find like all the you know, Instagram hacks. Somebody who works internally has to know what the algorithm is looking for, picking up. And I bet you there's like little ways around. Yeah, because I don't think there's a about. person assigned to our accounts. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. just, there's, hey, I want you to watch these four accounts. That's it's job. crazy that you know. I mean, thank God we have this show, and we don't we don't rely on social oh, media yeah. as our our main source of income. But think about how you know how stressful that would be if I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many people on there that their entire livelihood revolves around them being able to be found, you know, and it's like if you do one post where you feel like you want to just, you know, put it out there, you're just, your whole business is suffering. And it's one thing if they're they're restricting you from new people finding you, but they even restrict you from your own people. That's yeah. what's fucking stupid to me. Yeah. yeah, It's like, okay, whatever. You don't like what I'm saying. It's your company. I'm on your platform. You know, make it difficult for me to be found by other people. But at least let the people who have decided to follow follow me allow them to see my yeah. post. But even like, the fact on. checkers had to admit that it's just opinion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So that's what we're working with. Yeah, well, I mean, again, it's their company. I guess they could do what they want. But they are – what they're doing is they're digging themselves a hole because yeah. the more they do this – they may, the more they open themselves up to lawsuit because they are no longer like a carrier, like the phone company. They're they're actively editing, mm -hmm. and that's going to open them up for lawsuit. And it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time before they get heavily regulated. And it's part of the problem is that is, that, is how they're handling it. All. I've just always been about let wild people say wild shit, and we can ridicule it, and we can you know tell you why I don't think yeah. that's a good idea, yep. but. To, to stifle it and and withhold it from people looks way worse. It does. It actually, way worse. It actually in, it emboldens the conspiracy yeah, theorists, doesn't it? It's like, it? You, you, exactly. You, you're like, why? Why are they withholding all this? Like, what are you trying to hide? Well, I remember I remember my uh, my niece telling me about her experience working at Facebook and how I told you guys every Friday they would actually meet with Zuckerberg like on this big virtual thing and stuff like that. And there's he gets a lot of pressure to to do the right thing. 
you know, right. and he's because I, I don't I don't think that, you know, I don't think he's like this crazy left wing dude that's running that company. I think like just like the all in guys are talking about. I think most of these people that have built these Internet companies are more libertarian. I think they're more. Well, it was all started initially. Yeah. It was yeah. all started with the promise of the Internet, which was open and free. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what mm -hmm. motivated them. Yeah. This, 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 this idea of that people. of free market. So I don't I don't think that they have these left wing agendas like I know the right likes to say, like the right likes to come out with the conspiracy tinfoil hat theories that, yep. oh, they're all conspiring together. And it's like I don't buy into that, you know, because I think these guys start, but uh, I do think they feel a lot of pressure both from the government and from their employees. The, a lot of these guys employ, you know, Gen Z and millennials that and are based out of California. That's right. And Actually, not for long. Did you see Facebook's opening yeah. a huge office in Austin? How big? Yeah. So you said that. I want to know how big, and I'm so I gotta, mad that I got to see if I find, uh, let me see if I can find I it. mean, I, I'll be eating my words about Austin because I really thought that Austin was kind of peeking out as far as the the uh, real estate market there. But Jesus, if Facebook goes in there with a campus, where because their campuses are massive. So yeah. is it like a... Oh. A hub, or is it like a campus? campus? I gotta find it. I it's remember going, it's going to Austin. Babylon B. Uh, I don't know if we were talking about this earlier or not, but they've done a lot of posts that are like satire that have then ended up predicting something that actually happened, right? So one of them was They're like the Simpsons. Yeah. So one of them was uh, Gavin Newsom, where they were talking about like being the employee of the year for U-Haul. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I posted that meme like a year ago. It's yeah. so funny. And so the, the article just came out that like they cannot supply enough U-Hauls uh, to people here in California that are driving out, you know, to this day to to anywhere, anywhere so else. That happened to me last year. It was so crazy when I so when I moved last year, we got a, a U-Haul and the deal was they you bought it you put the down payment on it to reserve it for the day you're moving yeah. and they have to they have to tell you that we can't guarantee it'll be here though can't guarantee it i'm like what why yeah. am i putting this down payment down so that yeah when we were just trying to borrow one uh, i found i found the article so meta right facebook's parent company meta is leasing a 589,000 square foot facility across 33 floors it's half of austin's tallest skyscraper Whoa. And they're oh. expanding into What's that. What's a prediction on how many employees? They're going to hire find? 400 or more or 400 more people in the area. They're currently uh, 2,000 over there, and it's going to continue to grow. Okay, that's decently sized. Yeah. <laughs> that's not that crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's big. If, if you're no, a no, Texan, well, we did, are you excited about when that? We moved, when we bought in Fort Worth, what made us buy over there was Charles Schwab moved their headquarters yeah. over there, and that was like 8,000 employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about, that was that was their main headquarters, though, that they moved out to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Yeah, interesting. Mm, yeah. Hey, Justin, I have a conspiracy theory for you. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Yay. It's been a while. Now, this, it's been too long. People have been, I, I, I saw this get popping up. This was something that happened a little while ago. But now people are talking more and more about it. So it brings up that there's conspiracy about, or the theory, I should say, is that of parallel universes. So in Mexico, okay. somebody found a Nazi coin that appears to be legitimate, but the year on the Nazi coin is the year 2039. What? what? Yeah. So they, they, they found- <laughs> Come on. Where's the picture? Let me see. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll send it to the group. This so sounds, okay, go ahead. So it's they have the Reichstag uh, Nazi party symbol along with Nueva Alemania, which translates to New Germany, and there, there's writing on the back, and it wow. says 2039, and they're like, is this a coin from a future world? Wow, where the Nazis won World War II? Dude, this sounds just like that publicity stunt where they had those oh, mirrored pillars. A oh, bad idea. That's a, what a good call. Right? And then all of a sudden you saw it again in the news in a different location and you're just that's like, great. That's what true. is this? Yeah. 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 Like somebody probably made that coin and then like it just became like picked up by the news of like speculation. That's not that. a bad idea. That's a pretty good little theory right yeah. there. I mean, we Come should on. we have the science to be able to test and see when it was made, right? So you should be able to Ex do that. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, you don't that, that's that gonna science. poke. That's gonna poke hole in your carbon <laughs> dating, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> but I say you don't. You think it's bullshit? <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think so. it's bullshit anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, let's well, let's get that carbon dating yeah. out. Let's find out where that thing's from. No, I I actually I like. Like some of the old conspiracies that I like uh, about, you know, Nazi Germany that uh, had basically a lot of them had escaped and even like Hitler like staged his own death and was able to escape to like well, Argentina and then they had some base that they built in Antarctica. Yes. And, Have you ever heard of the, the Nazi connections to like the supernatural and like all kinds oh, of yeah, weird yeah, stuff? Yeah. Apparently there well, was Well, it's true. They were, they were like... Th 
very much obsessed with the occult in a lot of different like supernatural. Yeah, yeah and there's something called the Nazi Bell, which was supposedly a time machine that I'm, I'm seeing yeah. right now. And the, you said the secret base is in Antarctica. Yes. That, where they do time travel. <laughs> Project Project High Jump, I think, is is uh, one of those conspiracy theorists like wet dream where it's like, you know, apparently, I think uh, the U.S. Um, uh, I don't know if it's the Navy or w went, you know, on a reconnaissance and went down there and they actually met up with like U boats and and they found like some German, um, uh like different uh, vehicles and things and planes uh you know from nazi oh, germany did, but again i i don't i can't confirm any of that did you ever obviously. read about the philadelphia experiment maybe doug can look this up this was the attempt at creating a uh a cloaking system this was and this was during i want to say this 50s maybe doug can find out and they used very powerful, I guess, magnets or whatever. Anyway, the, the point was that you weren't that, that with this particular device, that the ship would become invisible because of its because of the cloaking. So they fired it off or whatever with people on board. This is how the story oh, goes. I did hear, and about it this, did yeah. disappear, uh -huh. but it literally disappeared, and then it reappeared, and people were vomiting and sick, and some people said that they ended up uh -huh. somewhere else, and what? some people ended up like they aged. There was a whole movie on it, the Philadelphia yeah. Experiment. Is, is that the name of the movie, too? That's the name of the movie, too. Uh, Doug, can you pull up? There's a movie called Cloak and Dagger. I thought that was maybe that's the one you're talking to. No, that was back in the 80s that we watched. Dagger. Did you watch Cloak and Dagger when you were a kid? That's a kid. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. That I was do great. remember that. Was no, one. you know what's great? Like, um, so back to Antarctica, <laughs> though, they, they actually showed natural, uh, national, what, what is it? Nat Geo? Oh. Yeah, so that uh, publication put a picture out where this, like, it's, I guess, quote, unquote, a natural formation. It looks just like a pyramid. Uh, in Antarctica, in Antarctica, you're like, what? That's, it, there's a cool picture of it. That's, uh, that's I don't Santa, know how big uh, it is. That's Santa's house. <laughs> hey, are you current? Uh, are you current on uh, Boba Fett? Are you watching the? Yeah. Are you uh, so good right I, now? Are I you watching it? it? No, so, what? It's not I'll yet. Come. I'm gonna start tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just watched. Um, I watched half of uh, the first episode of the the Gemstones. Oh, you did watch that? Oh my god, dude, dude! Please tell me, was that not fucking hilarious? Or what? <laughs> They're so good. I love Great way to close show. circle on this in this conversation too, because we opened up kind of teasing the extreme left. I feel like this is the extreme right, right? So <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, the this is the best satire for that. Um, yeah, for that uh, like televangelist kind of. Uh, and nobody's really touched that before, have they? Like not I was trying really. to think of like a show or someone that's not really well. Gone. Yeah, yeah, not that well. Like yeah. it is. They, they the cast is amazing. The jokes are like over the top. Dude. Who's that dude? One? I've been to churches like this. So really? this, this so is why lie. it's like so hilarious to me because the just the overproduction. The the guy that thinks like he never made it as a rock star and he's like on stage just. Me yeah. <laughs> it's like, I totally have, bro. What are we doing? So, that's Make, why knocking so people down with his hands. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the charismatic, slain in the, uh, slain in the spirit. It's, oh my god, hey, it's uh, who, so funny. What's that one guy's name? Joel. Joel. Joel, Joel Steen. Steen. Didn't he get some? Is he in trouble right now or something? They found a bunch of money. Oh no! In one of the walls of the, I don't know what like a bunch of cash or Again, something. No. Dude, really? Yeah, I got my skeptical. Uh, monocle every time like I <laughs> what? see <laughs> monocle. skeptical monocle like this. <laughs> please it's Andrew thing. Hey, I, uh, if you could bring that out anytime somebody tells you something <laughs> don't say anything you just, you just put on a monocle <laughs> just in here. yeah Close yeah anytime you like you get somebody that well known that famous that rich like that guy is crushing it I know you really. know and it's like dude all for the the glory of God right yeah. no, like, come no, on guys so now okay now the the defense right that he uses or that people use in defense of him is that all of his money that he has and he's worth most of it I guess is from like his books and all the other stuff like he doesn't have, like no money from the church supposedly oh, goes to him I know that hustle and dude, that's yeah me. so that's the now mind you you use the church to build the congregation and the huge following of people and so it, uh, in, indirectly you still are monetizing that way, right? But right. What is, what that's is, how not, I think not, that's how he gets away with like, it, right? You know, if you can make money and all that too, and like help people, but you know, there's a certain kind of sleazy, snaky vibes, especially if you're selling to be not attached to material things, right? Right. Be spiritual. I get that. What Doug? What does it say on him? Did he get caught with something? Or it wasn't him. I mean, there was uh, apparently six hundred thousand dollars of cash and checks that were stolen from a cha uh, safe from the church. Oh, okay. And they were found in a wall. So I, I don't think there's anything sorted about this. Well, I think they're condemning about that. I yeah. think the theory is that he, that his people said it was stolen and then hit it and tried to tell people, oh, we stole it. The, the money was stolen. 
That yeah. was the theory, but I oh, guess I that's not. Him. Yeah. Anyway, he's still yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I know there's a lot of supplement companies out there uh, that promises to deliver great results, but there's only one that spends a lot of time and energy on the delivery process. Okay. So you could be taking supplements that your body just isn't assimilating because it gets destroyed in the digestive tract or doesn't get absorbed properly. Well, Live On Labs uses a liposomal process. It's actually some pretty interesting technology that was originally created for pharmaceutical companies. What this does is it ensures what you're taking is getting to the tissues that you're trying to take that product for. So Live On Labs, one of the best supplement companies around. You can try them out by going to mindpumppartners.com and clicking on Live On Labs. By the way, they have this great promotion. If you get any one product, they'll give you a sample of all six of their products for free. So go try them out. First question is from Matt Brandt 67 I only feel back squats in my quads. and I Am I doing something wrong or is that how it is with some people? Yeah, I think um, it's very common. Actually, yeah, quads are are one of the main muscles you're going to develop in in barbell squats. Um, obviously, it hits the glutes and the hamstrings as well. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, if if you're saying that when you squat, you really develop your quads and you see very little or no development in other areas, or you feel pain in some areas, or your form is off, then I would look at strengthening some of the other muscles or changing your form and technique and going lighter. But otherwise, it's quite common to feel it mostly in the quads. If you do feel it in your glutes, it tends to be the day after where you get a little bit sore. Yeah, this doesn't necessarily mean anything is wrong, but I would say most people that I taught how to squat or watch them squat for the first time um, were quad dominant, and a lot of that had to do with their mechanics mm -hmm. um, and or their inability to get their glutes to mm -hmm. like fire properly, right? So it's very common to have people with like tight hip flexors from sitting down all day, which when you have really tight hip flexors and you get into the squatted position, it tends to cause more of a forward lean, right? So then your your chest kind of falls over mm -hmm. uh, forward more, and then more you don't have so as much depth in your squat, either. right? So then, so then you, so then you're going over uh, your your weight and the barbell are shifting over the quads more than it is kind of more mid quad, right? Where we'd kind of like it to be, uh, cause you, but you can't be upright uh, enough. So then you get that. And then to the point that Justin just made. So I do think that it, even though it doesn't mean anything is wrong, I think that m most people when they learn to squat have got some issues that they got to address and work on to to perform their squat better and feel it more. You know what? I don't feel my glutes as much while I'm squatting as I do afterwards. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Same thing So here. like when, while I'm squatting, it feels like my quads are taking but a lot of But when I get it. sore, I'll feel it in my glutes. Oh, yeah, glutes. definitely. Well, yeah, unless I'm doing like a pause squat and I'm really trying to emphasize yep. the bottom and the depth of the squat, um, which is something I would recommend if this is an issue and you're not really connecting well. And there's a lot of ways to connect to the glutes, and obviously priming is a big part of that. Uh, so to spend some time in that direction and, you know, do anything that you can do to kind of pre uh, sort of fire them up beforehand going into your backloaded squats, I think that'll help to kind of balance, uh, you know, the load there between yeah. the quads and the glutes. I did a YouTube video. Maybe uh, Andrew can link it right here. And it was... Um I think it's the most viral one we did. It was the one of the, the three secrets to make your butt grow mm -hmm. to Justin's point about what he's talking about. And that video isn't just for girls that want to make their butt grow. Uh, it, it's also for guys that want their butt to fire more when they're doing squats. So watch that video. I think the, the priming moves that I take you through uh, before you get into squatting, I think will help yeah, out a lot. I'd say that it, here's how you know something's wrong. Obviously, if you hurt in a way that's not that you're not supposed to hurt, like muscles burning, that's fine. Joint pain is an issue. If you feel it in your back a lot, that tends to be a big mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. uh, your knees or your ankles a lot, that tends to be a big issue. And then if you're somebody that, like you know, we're saying, wants to develop your glutes and you've been squatting and your glutes don't seem to be changing, but your quads are, then I would say, you know, do some hip thrusts first or prime properly. Watch your technique to it to fix that. But if you just feel squats in your quads uh, and everything else is good, you're probably okay. Next question is from Vicky Lula 18. How much does age influence the ability to make muscle and strength gains? It really depends on the age. It's now here's the thing. I a lot of the clients that I would train as a trainer tended to be in the age group of I would say 
35 to 45, I'd say, was a, a good chunk of the people that tend to hire that tended to hire me as a trainer. And when you're between 35 and 45, people like to say, oh my gosh, uh, because I'm older, my body doesn't respond as fast. It's not that big of a difference in those age groups, at least not in comparison to consistency, good technique, good nutrition. Here's what tends to happen though. You have more time to accumulate injuries and more time to accumulate poor movement patterns. So the challenge tends to be when I get a 40 year old, I have to correct a lot of things. Yeah before we can really move forward. But straight up, here's a deal. I'm gonna tell you something right now, uh, that some of the fittest people I've ever trained in my entire career were people who were uh, over the age of 38. And now it's not because they were at the prime age. I guess you could compare the prime age of you know, 20 or 25 to that, and you'd see there's probably some advantages. But the reason why people in their 40s tended to do so well, they were more wise, they were more consistent, with their training, and they had the the wherewithal to know that they should probably work with a professional. Whereas you tend to get a 23 year old who's got all the great age benefits, but doesn't that lacks the wisdom to get any help. I know I wouldn't have got help at that age. Don't you think that this is misunderstood because of all this the studies that point that oh when we get older yeah. you lose muscle. Oh when you get older hormone levels right. come down. Hormones drop. And so there's tons of, of of research that's around this that and I think that's why this this question comes up a lot. I think this is why it's it's so misunderstood because someone will be like, wait a second, I just read somewhere that it says as you get older, you know, testosterone levels decrease or yeah. muscle loss happens. Well, it immediately like, feeds you an excuse. Right. And what, what, what people are understanding is that this is like a, this broad study of, of the average person that just goes through their life, what tends to happen. What you're not taking into consideration is all their habits and behaviors over the course of those those mm -hmm. 20 years. To your point, Sal, like I've, so I've had clients that were in the best shape of their life in their late 50s. Yeah. Um, but that's because their diet and exercise regimen in the late fifties was better than it's ever been in their entire life. Yeah. Yeah. So you just have to keep that into consideration. Now, uh, do I think the older you get, uh, that you've, and, and you've prolonged those good habits, the harder it's going to get. Absolutely. If you take, mm -hmm. if I get somebody who is 30, never exercised, never dieted or tried to eat correct. Right. And they decide to do that at 30 years old. Do I think they have less of a hill to climb than the person who starts at 55? Yeah, of course mm -hmm. they do. But that, it has less to do with their age and more to do with like yeah. for 40 years, they haven't been exercising. They haven't been doing these yeah, things. Yeah. Therefore, hormone levels are down. They've lost muscle over those years. And so they have yeah, a, but, you a know, greater It's all the lifestyle that led into that. Yes. And, and so it's, it's a matter of like how much do we have to adjust and correct to even get close back to like that – honing in on that, that straight path. And, and so I think like the, you know, the longer you wait to uh, adjust and to correct a lot of these things that, you know, you should be doing right. You know, the harder it's going to be for you to, to then make gains. But it, you know, for me, I bought into a lot of the, the age thing for a while, even as a trainer I was like, I don't know if I can, you know, if my older clients were really going to make like substantial progress other than just maintenance, you know, or just like maintaining their strength. But I had a 70 year old guy who actually gained muscle and like gained like 10 pounds of lean muscle. And it blew my mind. Yeah. 70 years old and you can still gain muscle, but it was just an all new stimulus, very slow, methodical approach. Eating probably eating better. really well. Great community. He was involved in, he was all in. And, and, you know, and that happened. Yeah, your body never loses the ability to adapt. When it does, you're probably about to die, right? So you're, you can always adapt one way or the other. And yes, adapting in a positive way might get more challenging as you get older. But I, what I find interesting is we tend to focus so much on the negative. Here's the positive that, that I think is great about as you get older. As you get older, if you're consistent with exercise and nutrition, the further you separate yourself from your peers and it becomes not a small difference, a drastic difference. Like if I took 25 year olds that worked out and compared them and ate right and compared them to the average 25 year old, there's a difference, right? There's a bit of a difference between the two. Minimal though. You take a 70 year old yeah. that takes care of themselves and you compare that to a 70 year old that's the average 70 year old, it's 
light years of a difference. It's the difference between one group can completely take care of themselves, have no issues, have no health problems, and the other one is on medications, uh, might have had some chronic health issues, might need assistance to be taken care well, of. Anybody that's listening right now that is forty north of 40 years old and has lifted and exercised most of their life has already experienced this. Oh, yeah. If you've been, if you've been exercising most of your life and you're already north of 40 years old, you've already watched this happen with your own family and friends. Like you see the... the Maybe when you were in your 20s and you were lifting like that, you didn't look that different or you weren't that separated. You weren't that much more in shape than the most of them or the average amount of them. But man, once you start getting to 30 and then 40 and then 50, that gap just gets get wider and wider It and gets wider. massive. And also, you know, the hormone stuff and all that, uh, age can influence that. But when all things are equal, age doesn't make as big of a difference, right? So if you have a 45-year-old with healthy hormone levels and compare him to a 30-year-old with healthy hormone levels... There's a smaller difference, not a huge difference. Uh, when you throw all the other factors in, well, of course, then you can see um, some big differences. But my best success has always been uh, with people in that age group, and I think they take it more seriously. They're more likely to take advice. When you're younger, here's what happens when you're younger. Here's a big difference uh, that I'll tell you right now, is that you get away with more because you it's not cumulative. So when you're 25 – you can have looser form and screw up a little bit and whatever. When you're 45, you might have done that a few times. Now you're like, I can't screw up anymore because yeah. it's going to hurt really bad. And it's not, I, I was haphazard in my 20s. Up. Oh, I mean, when I was in my 20s, I was, you know, cautioned to the wind. I hadn't experienced any major injuries or pain. But after a few times of that, you know, now I'm much more careful and smarter about the way I train. And then here's the other thing nobody talks about <clears throat> if you're consistent, muscle memory is amazing it's so easy for me to maintain a body weight uh mm -hmm. you know over 195 pounds with relatively lean you know with a relatively lean physique you know when i was a younger man it was a struggle it was hard to keep that much muscle yeah. now it's like i could work out a fraction of the time and maintain that so there's also this cumulative effect of a consistent exercise that stays with you and builds with you if you've ever met a 65 year old bodybuilder who's been working out consistently you can see that, man, this person's got a lot of muscles that's just sticking around on their body versus when you're 25 and it's like, you know, you take a few days off or you skip a few meals and it just falls off your body. Next question is from Philip M. Carroll. What are your thoughts on fitness trackers like Whoop, Apple Watch, et cetera? I think that these tools are great for people who are probably already consistent and probably already totally into fitness. I do not think that these tracking devices are going to make a huge dent in the segment of the population that is, is challenged with being consistent with exercise. It's just more data, but it's not addressing the root cause of the issue, which has nothing to do with data. We yeah. have lots of information. Everybody can look up calories and exercises and what to do. The issue is not data and information. The issue is how to get coached through that, how to develop the relationship with those things. And so I don't think they're going to change much, but like trainers and people who are Consistent, really cool yeah. technology. I personally like them, uh, but I do feel like there's a very much of a window of relevancy to them, mm. and and that being, um, in terms of understanding your own habits and um, just like you when you track food, just like when you really pay attention to any of your behaviors, um, I think that it brings awareness. So if, if if you feel a certain feeling and it's able to um, help kind of give you a number to that and, and you can start seeing that matching your feeling. Um, but really, you already had the feeling uh, in, in terms of like, I, I don't feel like I'm 100 percent today and I'm overstressed mm. and like I, I'm pretty sure your body can <clears throat> tell you that and you can hone in on that. Um, but, you know, and I'm talking about HRV in terms of it feeling like I have. I have like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fully ready today and I could, I could press it and I could go a little more intense today. Um, uh, or like step count or all these other kinds of things. Like, I think, you know, whether you're active or not at, at a certain point, And I think you should know that. And that's really the point of it is not to be reliant on the number telling you how to dictate, um, how to navigate through your programming. I, th I mean, I've said since the beginning of the show that um, I love these things. I think they're, I think they're incredible. Um, I, I wish a lot of them existed when I first started as a trainer. I think Sal, you, you guys both bring up great points. I think that you're right. I think it, I think it benefits the the fitness enthusiasts mm -hmm. the most. 
Um, it doesn't benefit my mom so much at all, really, because I don't think that she's in that place of even like you. the The idea of it is education. It's it's to get you closer to understanding what's going on. Like, how is my body burning, and what is what happens when I eat like this, and when I exercise like that, when I do this, and I don't do that. Um, it's we've got all these incredible tools to help you get closer to understanding that. Um, most fitness enthusiasts are excited about that and they want to know that. So this obviously is an incredible tool for them where I see it go wrong is when people want to compare all of them. Like this person who's asking whoop, Apple Fitbit, like which one's better, you know, which one's more accurate, you know, and, and they want to compare the reading it's giving them to exactly what they think their body is like. Right. And that's the wrong way to go about this. It's like, listen, none of these things are precise. Even if it does line up precisely with your metabolism, generally speaking, none of these things are a hundred percent accurate. And the idea is just to like Justin's point is just to bring more awareness to what you're currently doing. So if you, if you go into it with that, that idea that, Oh, I'm using this to look at my own pattern my own behaviors. Oh, when I do this and I think this is what's going to happen and then I see the outcome because it's being tracked digitally for mm -hmm. me and I can go back and look at graphs and 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 go, oh, wow, I was wrong here or oh, wow, I was spot on here or I was a little off there. Like that's where this thing becomes valuable is to be able to use that as a way to get a better education on what is going on with your body. Where you go wrong with it is looking at it like hard facts, like Oh, my Fitbit said I burned 7,000 calories today, so I could eat 5,000 and I'm not going to get fat. Like oh, like right. thinking like that is the wrong way to to look at it. Use this this data to get closer to understanding your metabolism. Metabolism is one of the like you know we talk about the seven wonders of the world, right? You think this is the the universe and metabolism, right? Is up there. Metabolism, yeah, the universe, brain. gut, brain, right? There's yeah. like it's like one of the most complex things that we don't fully understand. And I think that th these tools help us get a better understanding of it. You can't expect them to be exact and precise to everybody. So stop looking at these tools like that. Use them as a piece of education. Yeah, but at the end of the day, the promise is it's going to help the average person. It's going to make this huge dent because of all this data. And it's not because look at our obesity is on the rise still it's, and these tools are getting better look, and better. Uh, look, uh, obviously a trainer working with you is the best possible thing you can have. Okay. But here's what makes trainers effective. It's not because they tell you what to do. If you had a trainer, look, if I could hire a trainer for every American, but the trainer only told them what exercises to do mm -hmm. and how many calories to eat and how many calories they burned, they would be ineffective. Trainers that are effective coach people. They coach them through the process. These don't do that. They just give people data. There's already shit tons of data. Go on the internet. You get all the data you want that ever existed. You could access it all. It does nothing. People don't need data. People need coaching. And if you've been listening to this show long enough, you know this. Yeah. This is why we don't sit and talk about proteins, carbs, and fats, and percentages, percentages and ratios, like because that's the shit that shit ain't changing people's lives. No, does it? Does that mean that doesn't help me as a competitor to get in competitive shape? No, of course I needed that stuff. Yeah, but to to reach the general population, it's it's more about behavior and Always. understanding yourself, and th and that's why we speak to that all the time. These tools are not changing that game. No. They're not, and they're not going to disrupt that whatsoever. Yes, for the fitness enthusiasts, will help you to get more precise and and, and a better understanding. Hundred percent. Next question is from Pete on the gram. What are the best workout shoes? Yeah, you know, this reminds me of this question. Um, so first off, it depends on who I'm talking to. And yeah. this is uh, this reminds me of something. So years ago, there was a book that was written about how running barefoot was the best way to run. And it was this author that went and observed people who had run their whole lives barefoot and saw how the foot struck the ground. And it was different than when you have running shoes on. And the yeah. foot and the ankle are these great shock absorbers and these people are running into their 70s and they have no back pain. And he's like, we've really screwed ourselves up by wearing running shoes that encourage us to Born hit- Born to run, I think. Yeah, there you go. Something yeah. Got. And it, you know, they encourage us to hit heel first and that causes all these problems. Whereas when you run barefoot or what these people run barefoot, it was forefoot first and all this other stuff. Well, then you had all these people are like, oh my God, groundbreaking, yeah. taking my shoes off and I'm going to run. And then you had all these injuries. The reason why I had all these injuries is because it's you got to develop the muscles of the foot and the coordination. It's years and years of work. You can't just take your shoes off, expect to run, and have all these amazing benefits. So depends who I'm talking to. If you have stability issues and ankle mobility issues, like am I going to tell you to go barefoot? No, you're going to hurt yourself. You go mm -hmm. barefoot, your feet are so weak and your ankles can't support you. Whatever weight you use to squat and lunge and overhead press and whatever, 
it's going to cause problems. So ideally, if you've got great control, great mobility, everything's connected, your feet are healthy and strong, barefoot is the best. How many people are like that? Very little. Yeah. So the shoes you choose, they have to match who you are and your issues. And then you can, if you want to progress to less supportive shoes, you can, but it's a, it's a methodical, slow, um, and controlled process. In, if you are at that point, barefoot or shoes that have minimal support. But if I throw the average person in minimal support shoes or, or flat footed, I mean, you're going to cause problems because they just, our, our feet are so underdeveloped and our ankles have such poor mobility yeah. because of the way we've treated ourselves for so long that just not a good idea. It's kind of funny that uh, in the fitness industry, we really didn't put any consideration around foot strength or ankle. zero. Yeah, support. Um, and that shoes were a big contributor to that. Uh, and uh, I remember like distinctly when I was training in a facility with like independent trainers, which was a whole nother sort of breed of trainer versus like what I had at 24 hour fitness and everywhere else. And, and everybody in there had the, the, the finger shoes, the toes and, but also the, uh, chucks. And, and, and I remember that being like, they're cool shoes in, in all, but like, I'm like, how do you, how do you guys train in these things? That's crazy to me. Like, I, I just thought it was crazy. I was all about the Nike shoes that had, you know, all the support mm -hmm. and, um, you know, were very much more athletic driven, like for running and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, honestly, the, the worst shoe to, to, to bring into the weight room. Uh, because of, you know, the, the lateral stability, it was dog shit. Um, you, you know, it, it was elevating my heels the whole time. Um, and so for me to transition, even from that kind of a shoe to Chuck's was quite a, quite a big step. And I remember feeling that difference right away, uh, with, uh, how my, my ankles were starting to talk to me, uh, like worked up the kinetic chain. So it's a very much of a, something that you need to gradually approach if you are to transition to something with less support. Um, but you want to work your way towards something where you do, you are able to, uh, have some flexibility in your shoe. So, you know, your, your foot can, figure out how to stabilize you a little more effectively. Well, what, what are we going to hear? We're going to hear uh, um, Chucks, Metcons, Vans, Vivo, Barefoot, whatever shoes. like Minimus. These are, these are, yeah, Minimus, right? These are all going to be the, the top shoes that are going to make this list right here. And the truth is what makes them the top shoes is they're the closest to Barefoot. Exactly. So the the ultimate Bottom goal line. is to be able to get to a place where you can work out Barefoot. I think that's the answer to this. Like, and whatever shoe is closest to But remember, to it. get to. Right, get to. That's why I'm saying it. it's very similar to the way we talk about squatting ass to grass. Mm -hmm. uh, that should be a good goal. So if you're if you're not squatting ass to grass right now, it doesn't mean I'm telling you tomorrow. You can't break 90 right now. And then you hear on the show, I say, yeah, go, go force squat. Yourself, yeah, yeah. Don't, go, don't go get down there just, if, just because we say to do that, but work towards that. Work, work on the mo hip mobility and ankle mobility to be able to get into a deep squat. The same thing goes with barefoot training. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like first walking around barefoot. Like if you don't take your shoes right now, if the only place you ever take your shoes off is like before you go to bed, like you ought to practice that first. Like anytime I'm at a place where it doesn't like require I have shoes, like obviously I'm not some weirdo when I go into, you know, the grocery store and shit, I'm walking in there barefoot and stuff like that or walking around out here in, in public downtown like that. But you bet when I get home, one of the first things that comes off are my shoes. My shoes come off and I'm barefoot. Second thing is the any, shirt. Anytime. Yeah, I don't yes. need any hepatitis C. And then when <laughs> I'm in, in the backyard with Max and we're playing in the sand and the tan bark and the dirt, like 100% we're barefoot. Yep. Like so, and, and that's how it started for me was, and by the way, like, uh, it was just not that long ago where my I, my feet were completely asleep and I had no connection to them and I couldn't squat ass to grass and they, my feet both pro, pronated. So I was a mess here. So it's not like this is going to take you forever to do this, but it just starts with those practices first. It starts with you first doing those little things by taking the shoes off and walking around barefoot. Then you can start doing some body weight type mm -hmm. of movements, work on stability, right? So this is where a place where before I go and throw 400 pounds on my back and squat barefoot, I'm going to do some, you know, lunges to a balance barefoot. You know, I'm going to do some things that are single leg. So mm -hmm. I have to work on that ankle stability and strength and foot strength at the same time. But Build, build those muscles up. Get strong on your feet. Yeah. I have specific shoes I wear for specific lifts, and that's just because I, I don't take the time necessarily to go and really develop my feet and my ankles, just, you know, full disclosure. 
So when I deadlift, I like very flat shoes. I wear chucks when I deadlift. If I overhead press, I also like to wear chucks. If I'm barbell squatting, I wear squat shoes because the heel is elevated and it compensates for my lack of ankle mobility. If I'm doing anything on a bench, I don't care because my feet really don't matter if I'm sitting or laying on a bench. So that's the way you got to think about it. Like, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to work towards? But don't go barefoot for the sake of going barefoot. If you don't have the the right stability and strength in your feet and you just go and take off your shoes or go super flat, you're setting yourself up for potential injury and pain. Even walking barefoot. I've even had people say, oh, I took all my shoes off and just walked barefoot. And then they get, you know, they get issues with the bottom of their feet. And they're like, why am I, why am I getting fascia issues? And it's mm-hmm. like, well, you always walk around in heels. So it's a slow, gradual process. Our bodies have totally adapted to wearing shoes. And if you've ever looked at a picture of a hunter-gatherer's foot next to a modern person's foot, mm-hmm. it is interesting. Forget the the Those bottom. Are gnarly looking. Forget the bottom of the foot with the thick skin and all that stuff. Just look at the top of the foot. Like toes are spread out and open, and it's like this nice, They're like w- muscular, wide, yeah. strong foot. And then you got the modern feet where the toes are all brought together and at weird angles, crushed. <laughs> crushed. And it's like we've really done a number of ourselves. And by the way, some of this damage can be reversed, not all of it. Uh, if you have children. Do this when they start walking. This is how you prevent these issues. Because once you go past a certain point, you can fix some of it. Like Adam's fixed a lot of it, but will he ever have the kind of feet that he would have? Like my son, when he was, I won't have feet like my son. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. See, I'm doing the same thing with my with my baby son, right? Um, So some of the damage. And you ever look at pictures of like pro basketball players, their feet. So oh, it's terrible. Well, because they had such big feet, they probably couldn't get shoes yeah. that fit properly. And they got these weird. They you imagine if you imagine if there. a pro basketball player is like, "Oh, I heard barefoot was good. I'm gonna go play pro. You know, I'm gonna go play basketball with no shoes on. It would hurt themselves like crazy." It's just word of caution. That's all. Uh, look, if you like Mind Pump, you like our information, head over to MindPumpFree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Salon. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 